Good morning and a very warm welcome to our online service from the parish of Wareham. Today I am recording in St Martin on the Wall, one of the oldest churches in Dorset in the UK. And it's lovely to have you join with us. My name is Canon Simon Everett. I am the team rector for this parish. And uh, we hope that during this service you'll be able to join in with our hymns, with our celebration, uh, and really fed by the word of God uh, that will be heard and be preached. Our service begins with the wonderful George, George Herbert uh, hymn, Teach Me My God and King, which was originally a, a poem about seeing God's transforming grace in, in every situation and looking more deeply into what goes on into the, in the world to see God at work. So we hear it and sing, Teach Me My God and King. The Lord be with you. We meet in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly lovely, love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In sinfulness we cry out to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips to speak your word. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I collect all these special prayer for today. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we have our first Bible reading from the Epistle of Romans, read for us by Judith Holmes. 
and this will be followed by our second hymn, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. Today's reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 12. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself would be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait patiently for it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our gospel reading today is read for us by Mike Quinlan, and this will be followed by a sermon preached by our team vicar, the Reverend Stuart Coxedge. The second reading is taken from the Gospel according to St Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. The Parable of the Weeds Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed ears, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered because while you are pulling up the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burnt. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house his disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burnt in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the blazing furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Good morning. Now I wonder, are you the kind of person who likes things in life to be neatly ordered and arranged and organised? Who likes to be in control? I know certainly that is my preference. I have a tendency towards wanting to order and organise things. And for those of you who enjoy spending time in your garden, if you have one, uh, are you someone who likes the garden to be neatly ordered and arranged and smart and well presented? We might have different preferences about those sorts of things, but I know that for myself, I'm really not much of a gardener. I'm not very good at telling the difference between the weeds and the good plants, which should be left and allowed to grow and flourish. But I know that I do prefer things to be ordered rather than too messy. And uh, yet I know that there's a danger that when we come to pull up weeds, uh, that we may inadvertently end up pulling up the good plants, which should be left to grow. I wonder whether you have any experience of that in your own garden. Well, it seems there was a danger of that sort of thing happening in the parable that we heard today in our reading from Matthew's Gospel. The slaves in this parable, which Jesus told, also wanted to pull up the weeds. Perhaps they were worried that they would get blamed for these weeds that had sprouted up amongst the good crop. Perhaps they wanted to impress their master. We're not told the reason, but whatever it was, they say to their master, do you want us to go and pull up the weeds? But their master, the owner of the field, says no. Uh, there's a danger that whilst pulling up the weeds, which have been sown at night by an enemy, they will also uproot some of the wheat, which has grown from good seed that the owner himself has sown. So, 
Instead, he asks them to wait. He asks them to be patient, to wait for harvest time to come, which it surely would. And then at harvest time, the wheat and the weeds, the good and the bad, will be harvested uh, and collected separately. The, wheat, the weeds sorry, would be tied in bundles to be burned, and the wheat, the good crop, would be gathered up into the owner's barn. So that is the parable of the weeds, which Jesus tells to the crowds. But then later on in the second part of our reading, once the crowds are gone and Jesus is inside the house with his disciples, they ask him to explain this parable. And he does so. He explains that the sower of the good seed is the son of man, a way that Jesus had of referring to himself and which relates and draws upon the language of the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, which depicts one like the Son of Man. So that's the, um, the one who sows the good seed. And Jesus explains that the field where the seeds are grown is the world in which we live. And the good seeds are the people of God's kingdom, whereas the weeds are the people of the enemy who sows them and who is the devil. And finally, uh, Jesus refers to the harvest time. And this is about the end of the age, the time which is to come uh, when God will return and intervene to put all things right in our world. And the harvesters are the angels who will do the work of harvesting at the end of the age. So what are we to make of this parable today? What does it mean for us and for our lives? Those listening to Jesus in the crowd in rural Galilee uh, would have been able to relate quite readily to this agricultural story that Jesus told. Perhaps it's a bit harder for us. We are um, separate and removed from the agricultural wor world by and large. But this parable remains just as important, just as relevant for us. So to apply it to our lives today, I want to talk about the importance of trusting God, putting our trust in God. Because when we look at the world around us, it's easy to think sometimes, well, what is the world coming to? When we see war and conflict, when we uh, see uh, poverty and tragedy happening around our world and closer to home, we may ask ourselves, well, how can God be in control of all of this, if all this is going on? But in the parable where the field is the world, the one who sows the good seed is Jesus, and the weeds appear and they're sown by the evil one, but the owner says, don't pull them up. So in the parable, the good seed and the weeds are allowed to exist together at the same time. Just as in our world, the kingdom of God is present alongside the evil and the effects of evil that we see very evidently around us and when we watch the news headlines. And the Bible teaches us that Jesus, with Jesus, the kingdom of God has come near. The kingdom of God has been established in our world. We see this in the reality of the good things that Jesus did and said, the way that Jesus healed people, delivered people, even raised people from the dead, the way that Jesus forgave sins, the way that Jesus drew people to himself. And those things, those signs of God's kingdom, continue today when people experience healing and forgiveness and restoration and through the work of the church in many ways. When those who are in need are helped, when the lonely and the vulnerable are cared for, when those who are outside are welcomed in. Those are the sorts of things the church is called to do, part of the work of growing God's kingdom and of course, Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. So the kingdom of God began with Jesus and continues with us today, the church. And yet 
uh, alongside and uh, in amongst all of that evil is also uh, of course still very much a reality in our world. Bad things happen, people suffer, people are abused, exploited, mistreated. Both good and evil are in evidence in our world around us. We see that very clearly, just as the good seed producing a good crop and the bad seed producing weeds were both in evidence, existing alongside one another in the field in Jesus' parable. But the owner of the field, Jesus himself, knew this, but he said, don't pull the weeds up let them remain until the harvest. And it's then that both the wheat and the weeds will be harvested, the wheat brought into the barn, the weeds taken away to be burned. Once again, a reference to the end of the age and a reference to God's judgment. And we're reminded that there is a need to wait, to trust God, to trust his timing and his justice, which will in the end be done in full. But yet in in the here and now, in the time that we're in now, the weeds continue to grow. We continue to see evil at work in our world. We continue to see tragedy and injustice in many ways. On one level, we may not like to think about the idea of God's judgment. We may be fearful about that, about that promise that Jesus will return to judge all people. But that is the event, the future event, referred to in the parable when it speaks of the harvest. And it means that in the end there will be a good outcome because justice will be done. God's good justice will be done. Those who do evil, those who exploit others, those who mistreat others, those who abuse their positions, those who are responsible for unjust structures in our society, they will be held to account. Justice will be done. God will triumph. Good will win over evil in the end. Yet evil is a reality for us for now, brought about by the enemy, the devil, yet in the end it will be destroyed. And so in the meantime, we're called to be those who trust God. We're called to be those who stay obedient to God, who walk in his ways, but also those who are patient, like the owner of the field in the parable. Patient, yes, but not complacent, so that we remain obedient to God, so that we put our trust in God, even in the face of great difficulties. And I began by asking that question, do we prefer things to be well-ordered, well-organised, under control, Or do we mind if things are messy or a bit chaotic? The parable of the wheat and the weeds reminds us that what the world we live in is not well ordered. There is often messiness and chaos and confusion. Perhaps we would prefer if it were not like that, but that is the reality of the times in which we live. People's lives can be messy and chaotic and unpredictable. And this is the result of evil and suffering in our world. And indeed the church isn't always the ordered and predictable and controlled um, place that we would like it to be. And so in in, in this sense of being in the here and now, the now and not yet, we're called to put our trust in God and not in earthly things. We're called to come to him in repentance day by day. We're called to be obedient to his teaching, because one day he will return to put all things right. And so may we put our trust in God, even when life is messy, difficult and uncertain. And may we see, may we be aware of the signs of his kingdom, of mercy, peace, justice in our world. And may we play our part in doing the work of God's kingdom here on earth. Amen. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with rest.
Our intercessions today are led for us by Anne Bashford. Father God, help us to set our thoughts on you. Open our hearts to the new life and freedom in Jesus that you long to plant in our lives. Give us a hunger for the things that speak of you and makes it easier for people to find you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this holiday time, we pray for our children and young people and our visitors that they will be kept safe and have the freedom to enjoy the countryside and the time to know you better. We pray for the businesses in our town especially those involved in hospitality. Give them the patience and energy at this busy time to be a friendly and welcoming face, remembering all who help at Not Just Sundays. As Malcolm, Janet and the family stay here in Wareham, may they feel the warmth of our welcome as we learn about their life in San Pedro and know our faithful support in the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring to you all who are fearful because of continuing warfare and loss of homes and loved ones in many countries. Those afraid for their young people in areas of political unrest and the many who find it harder each day to afford the rising cost of living. Give rest to the tired and the bewildered and the gift of hope through good and compassionate government decisions and the kindness of friends and strangers. Into your presence we bring all those who are sick, in pain of mind or body. 
remembering all those who have asked for our prayers, that they will find peace and healing, and those in distress because of bereavement, may they be given courage and comfort with their friends and families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, plant your life in us and enable us to share it in your world. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus, your Son, our Saviour. Amen. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And our final hymn, I heard the voice of Jesus say, And now may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself, the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service, and the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all whom you love, this day and for evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen.